Hello people, welcome to my channel. Today episode is we're going to exchange this 160 millimeter disc out. We're going to replace it with this 180 millimeter disc. So that's the job for today. As with any job on your e-bike, you want to start by disconnecting your phase wires. Now your phase wires are the most important wires on your e-bike, otherwise it's just going to be a regular bike. So make sure you disconnect your phase wires. Now your phase wires are lined up a certain way, so before you disconnect them, make sure that you notice how the arrows are lined up, so when you put it back together, you're putting it back together exactly the way you took it apart. So. Whenever you are, um, you're, you're, um, you're working on your bike, make sure you disconnect your phase wires so you don't forget. That's the first thing you always want to do. After you disconnect your phase wires, you want to um, loop cut all those tie downs and everything else that you, um, you're using to keep your, your phase wires uh, from dangling. So you want to disconnect all your tie downs and everything else. And um, in my case, I have a torque arm connected to my um, front tire so I have to loosen this torque arm also now I'm not going to loosen it from the top I'm going to loosen it from the, the bolt that from the bolt that's holding it in the dropout so that'll make it a lot easier when I'm putting it back I don't have to um, line it all up again so I'm just going to loosen it from the bolt that's holding it holding it in the dropout so once I have um, the torque arm disconnected I can go ahead and loosen those um, axle nuts and pull the, the, um, the wheel right up out the dropout. Now, the torque arm is something I want to mention. The torque arm is 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 is, 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 is important for um, holding the wheel inside the dropout, especially since that I'm going um, at speeds that this bike is probably not made for. The bike was made to go 20 miles an hour. Um, and here I am putting a front motor on it and making it go 30 and 35 miles an hour so I don't want to have any um, mishaps you know um, let me put it this way I want to have I'll, I'll be as safe as possible so the torque arm is helping to keep that wheel in the dropout so it's a, a good idea to add a torque arm especially if you're going to be increasing your speed on your e-bike now after you have all that stuff disconnected um, you loosen up the nuts, you loosen up the washers and the wheel should come right up out the dropout nice and easy. Now once you have the wheel come right up out the dropout, the next thing you want to do is take that disc off of it. But before I even take the disc off of it, what I'm going to do is exchange my calipers. Now as you can see, this disc is much bigger, it's much beefier, it's much more well made. You know, you see all that that black part in the middle, I don't even think is metal. I think it's some kind of um, fiberglass or carbon fiber, something like that, that's not really um, like good for, uh, it's, it's good for dissipating heat, let me put it that way. You're, it's not gonna heat up like this old disc that I had, that's all metal. So that's gonna be a good thing in, 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 in reducing the heat and the friction and the heat build up on my disc. And these are the calipers that I'm putting it up there. As you can see, they are um, 180 um, front disc calipers. So they're going to be really accommodating to these new calipers I'm putting it up there. And so, and um, they're really going to be accommodating to um, the brake that I'm putting up there. So make sure that you'll get the right kind of. Um, um, adjuster, you don't have to, um, you don't have to, um, put new calipers up there if you don't want to. You, there are always adjusters that you can get that you can adjust your brake out enough so that it would fit over that 180 millimeter disc. You know, if you get the adjuster, you can, um, put it up there and then you can still use the same brake calipers except you have to have the um the adopters so that you can um pull it all the way out and get it to fit over that 180 millimeter disc but instead of getting the adopters i just got the whole brake pad 
and so I'm going to just exchange the whole brake pad out. Now when you're exchanging these um, these calipers off, there's two nuts that's holding the caliper to the fork. So you know you loosen one up and then you loosen the other one up. You don't want to loosen one up and pull it out all the way. You want to um, go back and forth a little bit. Loosen one up, loosen the other one up, loosen the other one up a little bit more. Probably pull the other one all the way out and loop, pull the other one, pull the last one all the way out. So it's only two screws holding it in place, holding the caliper in place. So once you get those out, you should be good to go. And you pull it, you pull, you pull them all the way out, the caliper should come all the way off. And then once you get the caliper all the way off, you want to loosen the cable up. Now the cable usually have, um, it should have a cap on the end of it. If you don't have a cap on the end of your cable, your cable is going to fray. So make sure you always keep that cap on the end of your cable. If your cable fray, it makes it hell trying to thread it to a new caliper. You know, um, a free cable don't thread well, so make sure that you have your cable capped so it doesn't fray. So after you have your um, your caliper off the, the, um, the fork, you loosen up the cable and, um, and the cap so that you can pull the caliper right off the cable. Yeah, I tried to yank it off, but it wouldn't come off. So what I'm going to have to do is grab my pliers and decrimp it. And so once I decrimp it, it should make it easier to pull the head right off it, right off the cable. You know, it's, it's crimped one way, so you try to decrimp it the other way. And once you do that a little bit, you should be able to pull it right off. And then the calico, the, the caliper comes right off behind it. Now once you have that old caliper off, like I said, you could thread the other one right on as long as you, um, your cable is not frayed. You thread the other one right on, you put it in place, and you can tighten the nuts up. Don't, not tighten them up, but kind of snug them so that you, know, you have them kind of in place. So when you put that um, new wheel, and um, when you put that new brake, that wheel up there with that new pad on it, you can kind of move it around to get it to fit exactly in between because they are hydraulic line pull pads so both of those pads go in simultaneously to grab the disc so it's like a simultaneous movement of the um, the pads to grab the disc so once you pull on that line so make sure that you have it kind of loose so that you can um, line that pad up equidistant from those pads. You don't want to tighten them up until you make sure that you have your pad equidistance. Now, I'm saying this because I'm not going to have time to put the, um, the wheel back on. You know, I'm just showing you how to um, exchange your, um, your disc on your brake and the reason to do it. My very main reason for doing this um, this brake upgrade is because I realized my disc starting to glaze a lot because of the heat and the friction that's building up from the speed that I'm going now. You know, I never noticed it that much when I was going 20, 20 miles, 21, 24 miles an hour. But now that I'm going 34 miles an hour, I'm realizing my pads are getting hotter and they're glazing over so my brakes are not gripping as good as they should and that's one of the reasons I'm getting these cooler pads like I say they're not all metal so they're not going to be heating up as fast as um, as these um, stock ones that came with the bike plus they've been up there a whole year now about a year and a half to be exact and they're old and they're probably not you know they're not coded like they're supposed to anymore because you know they um they've been used for a whole year now so 
they're not as new as they used to be so it's about time to exchange them out anyway and um, it's a good time to exchange them out because they are um, they're glazing over and they're not holding as strong as they should and that's one thing you're going to realize when you if you ever upgrade your 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 your, um, your front disc your, your your front motor if you ever put a other front motor to your brake to your arm um, to your bike i'm sorry you're going to realize the faster speed is going to heat up your brake a little bit more so it's going to start glazing your, your pads you know it's, a, it's it, it, the friction is a, friction is bad for your brake so you're always going to make sure that your arm um, your pads are not glazed over and you have good pads and they're not heating up too much and these pads right here they are nice you can see they're much beefier they're much bigger just based on the diameter alone i'm going to get better braking never mind all the other things that, that um this brake have over the original it's bigger it's better made and it's going to stay cooler so those are three pluses right there that's going to help me in get to get a better braking situation and as any rider who rides a bike would know your front brake is your more um your front brake gives you about 70 at least 70 75 percent of your braking power especially in emergency braking situation and especially when slowing down from high speeds you know especially when i'm slowing down from 35 miles an hour i need to do it sometimes a little faster and these brakes are going to help me do it a little faster so this is a definitely a, a good upgrade if you have if you have a bike and you have upgraded your speed you need to upgrade your brake also so that's what i'm doing and plus these blue nuts that i'm putting in there they are an upgrade as well because they are reflective and you cannot have too much reflective stuff on your bike when you're riding especially at night you know you need people to see you you need lights and reflective stuff on your bike so that people can see you a lot better at night you can't have too much of that going on so this is why i'm putting these reflective nuts up there so at night when i'm riding my bike can reflect a little bit more even though i do have um if you see below my arm i do have a light down there now that light reflects patterns when i'm riding so that that's that's a good that's a good um safety feature when i'm riding at night it reflects lit it lights up it reflects patterns and stuff so you, know, you can't have too much of it on your bike when you're riding at night so once you have your um your disc up there you want to tighten it up the same way back and forth 180 degrees and then you want to go all the way around in a circle to make sure that all all these um little nuts are tightened up um i think it's like 40 pounds 40 pounds 40, 40 um pounds of torque to each not 40 four pounds of torque to each one of these so you know after a while you get a feel for doing it and you kind of get a feel for what four pounds of four to six pounds of torque is and you have them firmly in place so make sure that your arm if you need upgrade on your brakes there's going to be link for um these brake pads and these brake uh, rotors and these brake discs in, in the description below the brake disc and the brake pads and the brake calipers are going to be in the description below so if you need to upgrade your brake you don't want to go running around you on your arm you already have a good recommendation from Grover Z bike right here so just hit the um the links and get your upgrade make sure that you're safe on the road so that's going to be basically it for the video i'm not going to um show you how to put this brake back on your arm um, on your bike this, this this wheel back on your bike if you figure out how to take it off you can figure it out how to put it back on just make sure that you have um what kind of whatever kind of brake you have that you have it lined up properly and that your arm um, you have your nuts tightened down properly so that when you pull that brake line it's holding on to the arm um, the pads are holding on to this this like they should 
and giving you proper braking action. Your brake should be able to stop on the dime and so your front brake carrying most of the weight when you pull on your brake line should definitely be something that you um that you have in in in, in, in top shape when you're riding. You don't want your front brake to definitely to never let you down. Your brake by your, your back brake might be uh, letting you down a little bit but you don't never want to take a chance on your front brake. Your front brake is your emergency brake. It's going to carry 70, 70, at least 70% of your braking power. You want to have it in shape. And so that's what I, I'm doing right here. I rode around, like I said, on that brake for a year. And even though it was starting to glaze over, I would go ahead and just change the pad instead of um, changing the whole disc. So now that I have a chance to change the whole disc, that's what I'm doing. This disc is, is better. It's, it's beefier, it's much more well made, and it's not going to heat up like that old stock disc that my bike came with. So, there is link for, the, for, the, for this disc below. It's going to be linked for the, um, the caliper below. And if you need to upgrade your brake, hit those links, upgrade your brake, be safe on the road. Go with e-bike e e recommendation. See you guys later. Thanks for watching.